Welcome to Bible 180, 1 Samuel. There are three main characters, Samuel the prophet, Saul the false starred king, and David the true anointed king. The story begins with Hannah, a barren woman who is loved but seen as useless by the agrarian and power-based society of the tumultuous time of the judges. When Yahweh grants her prayer request for a son, she dedicates him to serve in the tabernacle under the priest Eli. She writes a powerful song about how God uses the underdog to bring about salvation. It's a sign of the times that Yahweh can't rely on good leaders to naturally arise out of Israel, as Eli's sons, who serve as corrupt priests, are Exhibit A. Instead, he must miraculously intervene in the extraordinary birth of a child to find the right ruler for Israel. The Lord speaks personally to Samuel to proclaim Yahweh's had enough of this corruption. Then, the Ark of the Covenant is captured by the Philistines. The Israelites lose it because they are unfaithful and unworthy of God's presence. However, it's even worse for the Philistines. When they leave their chief god, Dagon, alone in the room, as the same room as the Ark, the first night, Dagon falls on his face and the second night, his face falls off. Eventually, the Philistines return the ark voluntarily because they don't want any more trouble. The word of the Lord continues to come to Samuel, and he was the last and the best judge of Israel. Both God and the Israelites acknowledge him to be a good ruler, but it's not because he really does anything all that spectacular. What makes him good is that he's faithful to Yahweh. Ironically, the people petition this, the best judge of Israel, because they want a replacement, a king, like the other nations. God tells Samuel not to take it personally. It's the Lord, not Samuel, that they have rejected. Samuel reprimands the people. They repent. Yahweh forgives them. First, he sends them the king they want. Second, he'll send them the king they need. The first king, Saul, is the greatest warrior in Israel and the tallest. He leads Israel to several victories and starts off well enough, and the Holy Spirit even comes on him for a time. However, he's impetuous and impatient. While he talks a good game, he plays too fast and loose, both with his role as king and with God's instructions. Eventually, Yahweh pulls the plug and reboots. After rejecting Saul, the Lord sends Samuel to anoint King David and sends David the Holy Spirit. David kills some big guy. Saul tries to strike David down three times, but after that, he's out. David flees rather than opposing the Lord's anointed. Saul descends further into jealousy and despair. He even slaughters innocent priests who unwittingly helped David escape. David spends years on the run, Israel's most wanted, even though he is Israel's true king, like Jesus. David's a good dude. Not only does he show compassion and temperance at times, he's also steadfast and carries out difficult tasks. David is successful militarily, and although he's exiled, hated, and there are attempts on his life, he is the true king who will save his people, even if his own people don't yet recognize him. 